we're here. There you are. Good evening, everybody. I take it you can see me, hear me, and all the rest of it. So uh, I'm standing in for Mark tonight, as you know, and um, I thought uh, I would turn some, just turn an ordinary bowl and let you see what that is. So before I do all that, I'll bring in my worries. And we have the lovely Dale, maybe three Studios, and the even lovelier Joe. Lovely. The uh, other half hey, of cool, your experience. Cool. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so thank you to my earworms. I'll we'll put you back in the background and I'll explain what I'm getting here. Uh, so I do. This is all new to me. This uh, this stuff here. So I'll just change the camera. Bing, 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 bing. That's what we got today, people. Okay, oh, let me get this looking right. Right, there we are. So, we have a piece of tulip wood, nine inches by three inches. And uh, I purchased this back in 1989, and that's what the tag said on it. And I think it said something like 2 three pound ten piece, something like that. So, it's been here for a few, four few years. <laughs> four and six, yeah, nearly. <laughs> so what I thought today is I'll I'll turn this up, see what it comes out. If I take if I I'll turn it too fast, then I've got another little project I do have to do, but I can do that at some other point. Right, so we'll have a go, eh, shall we? Any questions you may have, of course, talk to my earworms. Run out a thousand revs? Just Hello, Rita. Who's in the chat? Yes, okay. please. We have the ever lovely Alex Lambie, Barry's wood turning, Brian Hardwood turning, the Dark Man himself, DIY Dark Matter, Douglas Mungham, um, Barry's wood creations, uh, Duncan the Demon Barber, Four King Owls, Huey, uh, James Crawford, John S, Lawrence, uh, Mark the Gentleman Wood Botherer, uh, Mark, Mike the McNair Joker, Robert Robinson. Robert Dolman, Robert Dove, TJ Tunlin, Tommy's Woodshot, Wayne of the Big Feeties and Val of the Little Feeties, and Wood Wizardry by Con. I think we've had Steve Ellis pop in, um, and we might have had one or two others since I started. Oh, we have a Circular Keith by Wood. Um, it's popped in, and one or two others. Folks, sorry if I missed you, but yeah. If you have a question for uh, young Terry, please prefix a question either QQQ or hello, that's not Wooly. Right, so that's, uh, that's got it into some sort of perspective round, boys. We'll set it up for facing off the front. I'm going to keep disappearing and going back and change inside camera. There we go. So I think I'm going to put a tenon on this. We'll just face off the front first. So, folks, it's almost inevitable that young Terry will use Yorkshire grit on this wonderful piece. The question for you lot is, do you want A, the lovely Joe to sing, or B, the even lovelier Terry to sing it himself, C, horribly <laughs> out of tune Dale to, to, to sing it, or some horrid mismatch barbershop quartet type thing with one shot? You're just trying to slope shoulders, that's what you are, Kirk. We're trying to slope shoulders. Say nothing to no. speak to my agent. Well, Mark, I no. <laughs> It's Dale he wants. It's Dale he wants. No. Oh. It's Dale he wants. It's Dale. Jennifer's, Jennifer's craft said. Hi, Jennifer. Oh, you're in demand, Joe. You're in demand. Uh, well, it could be, it could be you, Joe. Unfortunately, it could well be you. <laughs> oh, Douglas Mungham says the tree. I don't think you've got a slightly there, Terry. The three? Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about the three of us. Cleaning lines. Oh. <clears throat> 
remember folks if you have a question for uh, Kerry uh, the prefix it with QQQ or with the phrase that's not Willie that's not Willie Some of this away. Yeah, Richard Peters is in the chat. Hello, oh, Richard. Hello, Richard. Well, everybody, thank you very much for coming along and watching my rough turning. Blair, is... oh. good turn daily by Blazing. Hello, Blair. But Dolman said it's just the right time for the trio. You see, come on, people, the three of us at least. Barking Owls, question Is Joe going to sing? Well, you're you're, ready, you're ready to sing. I should, she's going to have to. I should imagine she would be. Uh, I should imagine she would be. So, this set of jaws I'm using now, uh, sea jaws, they, they don't have a dovetail on them, they have uh, a recess. And a lip, so a flat tenon is uh, is all you need. <clears throat> and they grip behind the tenon rather tight. So. Uh, Douglas Mungham says that's not woolly. Terry Tulipwood. 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 Purchased back in 1989. That's what Tag said, which I I remember getting it. 1889. Did you say that? 1889 and 1989. <laughs> In fact, I think Douglas asked me yesterday, could I turn something fast? So, oh. sure, I'm going to turn fast. So, I'll, uh, I'll attempt to, Douglas. <clears throat> Wait a little bit. Do a pirouette or borrow Mark's pole dancing pole. <laughs> Mike the Midnight Jerker says the whale, the whaling earworms barbershop quartet. Terrorizing chat with a not so close harmony singing. I think he's being complimentary there, suggesting the word harmony even enters into the conversation. Yeah. Wayne of the Big Feet, he says, Is 1989 the last time Terry put his hand in his pocket? It's probably that. I try not to. Richard Beers says, is Tulip Wood a type of poplar? Um, or is a type of it poplar? Is. Don't confuse yeah. it with Brazilian <clears throat> Tulip Wood, which is expensive enough. and gorgeous. Richard says, Tulip Wood is a type of poplar. Don't confuse it with Brazilian Tulip Wood, which is expensive, gorgeous. Isn't Brazilian Tulip Wood pink? Um, oh, I don't know. This is sort of brown, etc. Yeah, there's a finishing cut on that piece. That's got it cuts lovely, mind. I will submit it does cut lovely. However, it's apparently not very good to sand. So Neil Gold is it? I'm not going to have to sand that much. I knew. Oh, Glenn, Mister Mister Grit himself, the Yorkshire Grit, Glenn is in. Robert Dolman's offering us some advice and singing. He says, try and bet that the right words at the right time, but not necessarily in the same key. As long as they're in the right order, I suppose. He's Glenn joined, is he already? Exactly. Well, Glenn's in. You know, he's he's like a lot, even a Glenn. He's like Beetlejuice. You know, when you say grit yeah. three times, he's sure to appear. <laughs> Just 
check that shape. We need to come in a bit there, actually. Oh, my. Lynn's saying it isn't Brazilian poplar furry. Oh, dear, it's going downhill already. Who's feeling better? That's how I'm interpreting that. Look at that for a finish. It's a beautiful finish. For this, uh, I never knew it was that good finish, but there we are. Wow. First time I've turned this, I've had it all those years as well. Never mind. I'm a fan of Chilo Okay. Uh, Richard Piers is, say, is telling us, I once took on a commission of 50 kitchen cabinet knobs in this in this sort of tulip wood. It's a bit fibrous, yeah. and having done so so much work in it, I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> Aye. Uh, Hugh, is, Hugh is obviously suggesting it's a bit furry. Uh, Glenn is suggesting that yes, but it comes in little strips. Okay. Well, that's that bit done. I mean, that was quick, wasn't it? I mean, 11 minutes. Sugar me. It was quick. Ooh. It was, isn't it? Oh, well. There you are, Douglas. You've seen it now. You've seen it. Folks, we need to slow Terry down a little bit. So remember, I've got if you've got a for Terry, you. if you've got Terry, if you've got a project, if you've got a question for Terry, prefix a question QQQ, or uh, prefix it with the phrase "That's not very woolly." <laughs> Bit of sand and sealer. See what this stuff comes up like, eh? Duncan the Demon Barber is asking, have you been taking lessons of Wayne? Uh, no, I just, uh, I've been turning for a little while, so I tend to get over it, excited. And, 10 and, years old, I think you said the other day, you've been turning since you were 10? Yeah, yeah, 10. He's now, he's now 97. 69. <laughs> 69 97 years old. 97 people, don't listen to him. <laughs> he's just, he's just preserved well. An easy paper round. And a good nice paper round. <laughs> a paper round, Dale. Question, question, question for Terry from the Yorkshire Get himself. Should okay. have to, should have, Wayne and Terry. Oh, so Terry, can you tell us about your vegetable patch? My vegetable patch? Yeah, well, what do you want to know about my vegetable patch? I have a, two allotments, which I'm, uh, I've been doing much to them lately because of this lockdown business, but I do have two allotments. Normally feed the family all year. We've just finished, uh, I think, about like four or five onions left out of starting eating last July. So we're still eating them. We're just How, are the leeks? Them really. How are the leeks coming on this year? The leeks are beautiful. And I've got Brussels sprouts, about 500 of them. More than that. There we are, team. We'll let that dry for a sec couple of questions out in the Give chat. One from Richard okay. Piers. QQQ, was that neat sanding sealer? Terry Smart would be proud. Most of us ignore his advice not to thin it. Yes, that is neat sanding sealer. Yeah. Uh, it's because I've run out of thinners. I normally seal it 50-50 uh, actually, but unfortunately I've run out of thinners, so I've done it neat. Right, um, <laughs> but this uh, is very fibrous and porous. Wide grain, really wide grain. So uh, it did take that in, it soaked it right in. So I'm hoping it's going to do the job. Okay. Mark, the gentleman would turn ask, Did you mean not to sand it then? Well, actually, Jamie, JP Woodwork, said to me, He's turned Tulip Wood before. He said, It's lovely to turn, it gives a good finish, but it's a heller to sand up. So uh, I thought I'd turn it with a nice finish 
and see if Yorkshire Grit will bring it out. Because they said if you start sanding it, it's ridiculous. Actually, I probably could put, it probably could do with a 240 on there. So we'll try that. See if we can get away with. Actually, I'll put 180 on and then 240. But he said it, it will clog. It's, it's do it this way. He said because it's. Uh, Another it's, question um, on the chat for you, Terry. Uh, from Douglas Mungham. Mm -hmm. Terry, how long would it take to get the edge of get? Oh, yeah. So, in, in order to slow you down, Douglas is asking this question. Yeah. Question, question, question. How long would it take to get to the edge of the universe and back? And how old would you be? Uh, I've been there, and I'm 69. <laughs> I haven't got a clue, Douglas, but I can slow down if you like. I'll just put this on slow down. Take me about an hour, eh? Barry, hello Barry, is on. Yeah, hello Barry. Because the sand is here, it's moon. It's uh, evening Barry. Got a few ridges. He's almost always at this stage wants some people to burn it. Yeah, I thought about burning it, but. No real point. I don't know to put on it after burning. So. Ooh, look. Ooh, look at that. Eh? Look at that. It is turning out nice. Let's see what this. Uh, I got this stuff. I managed to get. I got this stuff somewhere. Don't know where I got it from now. Your standard sealer first. <laughs> Sandy yeah. Sealers on, yeah. I learned that from uh, Mark, the gentleman word turner. He, uh, yeah, I was watching him one day and he, he, he did the job, you know, he, he's ready to put, he's just about put, he put the grit on, finished putting the grit on, realized that he'd, he needed to uh, get a bit more in it. I mean, with you guys, I mean, Sandy um, Sealer on. So, I mean, at your age, Terry, right. I mean, you're 97. I mean, I can understand why it'd be helpful. Yeah. You know, I mean, Mark's obviously <laughs> quite old, too. Yeah, he's quite well, old, really. I mean, he's, he's, quite, he's, he's really quite old. I mean, he's older he's than me. Mark reckons he got the idea from Mike Walt. That's possible. I could understand that. That's pretty good, actually, because when I saw him do that, I thought, that's good, because the day before, I actually forgot to put Sandy Sealer on first. Let it be known, that was Mike Walt's idea. <laughs> I should thank Mike when I speak to him next. You have Brilliant. 62 people watching, young man. Oh, that's very nice yeah. of you people to come in and say hello, chat amongst yourselves, and throw me silly questions like the universe and all that thing in me jobbings. All right, we'll speed it up a bit. I'm not too worried about the bottom of this because I'm going to want to take the tenon off and uh, it will come off anyway. That's Nick, we the flaming turtle. <coughs> evening, Nick. Nick. Nicholas, how are you? Good afternoon. I'll go to evening. Matthew Gallagher, wood turnings in also. Good evening, Matthew. Oh. <laughs> evening, Matthew. Mark, the gentleman would turn and says, he's only 61 days older than you, Dale. Yes, Love that's all that loud. matters, Mark. <laughs> that's all that matters. As long as he's one day older than you. Minutes would count. That's all I'm saying. Right. Yorkshire Grit's been explained to many people many a time. So we'll just uh, check that the paper's clean. It is. You haven't that's sung, Joe. Good job. Uh, you didn't okay. sing, Joe. I'm singing now. I'll, I'll, I'll carry on, Joe. Carry on. Hang on, right. I'm Yorkshire right. Gridding, people. Right. Hands that feel pity can be soft as your face. With light brown Yorkshire Gritty. Okay. Perhaps you could do the inside. When I do the inside of the bow, Dale, I'm looking for a cue. Sorry, mate. My mic's breaking up. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Right, young, young, young Glenn of of Gret fame is saying, "Get some revs on, Terry. Get some revs on. 
I will do now. I'm hamstring sheening. I better show you first. Ding. My gloss. My gloss. Question for Terry from Douglas Mangum. It goes like this. Terry, where were you born? What infants, where juniors, was I born? And senior schools did you go to? And what was your first job? And how much did you get paid? <laughs> That's trying to slow me down, isn't it? <laughs> so I was born in Plymouth, in Devon, which is where I live now. I've only been to Wales on holiday once or twice. Uh, what else was it? School, I went to Effort Academy of Young Scholars. It was that good. Uh, they knocked it down and put housing to stay on it. Uh, we went to uh, St. David's Primary in Pontypridd. <laughs> the <ne> so <laughs> the next question was, what was my first, what was my job? Well, I started as an apprentice when I was 16 in Her Majesty's Dockyard in Plymouth as an engine fitter, fitter and turner. And I did my apprenticeship. I was a metal turner and bore machine operator and, well, manufacturer and all the rest of it. And then I left there after about six years, seven years, and became an AA man. I that. Worked for the AA. For 31 years, I thought I'll need to get my pension from somewhere. Can you have a word with SK Crafts? You may, you know, see if you can help him out with his, his Land Rover. Yeah, I could actually. I was going to, but, you know, I had to come and do this because Mark slumped shoulders. I thought, well, yeah, I'll best come here. But no, you he, when he told me like minutes before. So. Yeah, well, well, I like well. Suggesting that, uh, given his observations, that he hasn't seen any real zombies from the COVID shots yet. Okay. So he thinks it might be okay. Good. Well, that's that done. Richard Piers is saying, I bought my Yorkshire grip from Snaton's, where else? And it came with an A4 instruction sheet. I can send a scan of it, anyone who wants it, if they don't have it. A4 instructions? Bit late for me, I think. But. Uh, young young Glenn of Grit fame says, I reckon Terry is a sheep warrior sent to Devon on witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Glenn. Top mark. Two. I've probably done nine this point, this morning. 9.9 for the crowd. <laughs> uh, Huey says, laughs out loud. You don't help a man with a Land Rover unless you're a, a, a brain surgeon and offer them a frontal lobotomy. Says young Huey. Huey's clearly feeling better. He's clearly feeling better. Yeah. Right. Move that out of the way. Let's take this tail stop. Send the right. Before it kills me. We'll do for that. 59 watching. Ah, jolly good. There we are, look at that. Right. Move that in. Move that in. Off again then, team. Question, question for Terry. What is the meaning of mm -hmm. life? Asked Douglas Mungham. Well, the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Uh, enjoy yourself. It's a movie by the Monty Python crew. That's how you answer that question whenever it's posed. Aha. Aha. However, a number of other people are suggesting that uh, it's 42. Lawrence is asking, Terry, do you still do some yeah. metal turning? I, I, I don't actually. I haven't got a metal lathe. I was thinking of getting one the other day, actually. I thought... I could get another metal lathe and then make all the parts I want for wood turning, you know. I but, know where there is one. 
You do. In your shed. Yeah. <clears throat> Mark the Gentleman Woodturner has this advice for you, this support. He says, you're doing grand Terry. Up the Devon, lads. I mean, he tells that. I mean, he tells that. Explains to me. He says you're doing. I'm doing what? He says you're doing well. Doing grand, Terry. Yeah. Up the Devon, lads. Yeah. <laughs> All to do where you come from, uh, Mark, isn't it? This guy's got this together. Asking, young Douglas is uh, uh, going. Question, question, Terry. Why are we here? Why are we here? To ask me questions. Have a bit of fun. If you want, okay. Uh, Rubber Dub asks, question, question, question. Has Terry ever made his own centers on the metal lathe? I used to when I was uh, when I was younger. I used to make everything. I mean, so set to darts like you wouldn't believe the, all the darts teams <laughs> when I was younger. Made lots of things. I used Fine. to work on when I was in. Sorry, go on. Sorry, Terry. No, go on, Terry. You, you're not finished. When I was in the dockyard uh, at the end of my apprenticeship, I got to work on a lathe, which was about 150 feet long. Um, used to turn propeller shafts and things like that for Your Majesty's ships. And uh, the former came to me and said, you're supposed to be pretty good at this, lad. Yeah. He said, I want you with that. We had a, another uh, another machine that did facing off and boring machines. And, these, uh, and he said, I want you to make it cost. Uh, in those days, it was 150 pounds, he said, to every time they launch an airplane, they lose 150 pounds because the strop was going to sea. Could I make? to design on the back of a cigarette packet at the time. Could I make this catch a strop? So a friend and I spent about two months designing and making the first HMS Art Royal strop catcher to save money. And I got to go on sea trials with it. Uh -huh. uh, press the first button to launch the first plane. <laughs> Question, a couple of things out of the chat. Uh, Douglas Mungham is asking, uh, question, question, Terry, why were we put on Earth? Um, why following up from that, following up from that, Mark the Gentleman Woodturner offers this insight. For a lump of wood over 130 years old, that's not looking dry. <laughs> True, Mark. We're all, we're, well, I, I know why I'm on the Earth, Douglas. I'm on the Earth to to um, do this to entertain you and all our friends. It's the reason I'm here. Uh, a couple of questions left. Uh, uh, Jennifer's Crafting Creations. Question, question, question. Well, I'm suspicious. Jennifer's Crafting Creations. Is that is that Jennifer Stroughton, do we think? I think it's Jennifer. Oh, yeah. It's Jennifer Stroughton. Do we think so? Hmm. Uh, Jennifer's uh, Crafting Creations, who may be Stroughton. Uh, uh, what's your favourite thing to turn and and why? And also, what's your favourite wood and tool and why? My favourite thing to turn... Uh, ooh, difficult, really, because I like turning spindle turning, and I like... I, I, I really like spindle turning. But I also like doing this, because it's nice when you rip it all off. This is a dry piece of wood as well. It's even better if you turn a wet piece of wood. Um, my favourite word, I would have to say, you and ash. They're both, both my favourite words because I love them both. Nice piece of you and a nice piece of ash. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to this particular insight. Uh, question, question from Jamie Page. Is that mm -hmm. ball blank from a tree that you planted, Terry? Uh, <laughs> no, I bought this. I bought this when I was a young man. You're obviously, you know, yeah. I mean, I you were obviously. I mean, it's 130 <laughs> years old. <laughs> yeah, I was 30 something. 
better slow this down a bit, really, and I. Oh. Right. I'll take a nice uh, <coughs> light cut here. Mike, the Midnight yeah. Joker has a, a question for you. Terry, he asks, is it true you can turn your lathe up to 8,000 RPM? You know, is it, sorry, my bad, I read that completely wrong. Is it true that when you turn your lathe up to 8,000 RPM that you can travel in time? Uh, backwards, yeah. It's, um, it does go up to 3,700, Mike. But I'm only going at 1,400 at the moment. I daren't go too fast. I'll be finishing five minutes, don't I? Uh, Matthew Gallagher is offering this insight. And this might make sense to some folks from, you know, I mean, from down in Devon. We'll have to go down. We'll have to go. We'll have to go down, ja Captain Jasper, for a brew when they open. Oh, Captain Jasper's absolutely. Captain Jasper's is uh, on a place called the Barbican, which is the old city of Plymouth. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Rex nice. B is a question for uh, yeah, you, Terry. Hmm. He's asking, what is one suggestion or one aspect to help others in wood turning? Uh, one aspect to help others, practice. Somebody to show you how to do it. If somebody shows you how to, I mean, you know, to be honest, that uh, I've been flying through this, but if I could hold the gouge up that side down, it wouldn't cut. I hold it that way, it would cut, but it would jump, dig in and snap the work. So if somebody shows you, how to hold the gauge, where to put it. What you shouldn't do is you shouldn't grip it like white knuckles. Just hold it like, I mean, I'll find the best way to hold it. You're not supposed to pressure with this hand. This doesn't do anything, this hand just keeps it on the tool rest. This hand does all the work. And you can <coughs> actually turn. A question you don't from. Need hands on it, though. Question oh. for uh, uh, from from Yorkshire Get himself. Uh, question, question, question. Was the massive centre lathe a Dean Smith and Grace Terry? Um, I'm just trying to think now. It was about a hundred foot long bed. The the actual bed was about um, well, the gap between the bed was about fourteen and fifteen inches. And the bed, the, the the widths of each bed were about a foot and a half each. A massive, great thing. I mean, we had independent four jaw chucks as well as ordinary three jaw centering chucks and four jaw centering chucks. So off center turning was a doddle because if you wanted to turn something, we used to have to turn up. Uh, I had one job. I'd turn up some some uh, submarine blow valves, and the tolerances on them had to be within one ten thousandth of an inch, or they just throw them in the bin. You, just chuck them back in the in the melting machine and start again. So uh, this machine was like really accurate, but and you could and you had to turn like the different faces of it. You had it, it was sort of you know entry in the bottom, entry at the top, the top of it had a clamp. You know the cast in itself was a valve inside, and you could turn these things on this independent for jaw chuck and uh, put any off center you wanted on it set it up and don't touch it till you finished it so uh, yeah good right alex lambie's got a question what angle is your gals ground to terry they're ground to 50 degrees all my gouges are 50 degrees and one of them i can't remember which one it is this one's ground at 40 degrees. That one. Where are we? There's the camera. I hope you can see it. <laughs> Maybe able to see it. Ground at 40 degrees uh, to get around the bottom of a, of a bowl, if, if I can't do it with the other, but most of them are 50 degrees. I find that gives me a nice cut. Um, and it takes off the timber pretty quickly, so it's quite nice. You have 63 watching, right. Terry. Oh, well done, team. Thank you ever so much for participating in my stand-in moment. Um, question from question from Douglas Mungham. Terry, if the mm -hmm. lathe says 1,400, what speed is the centre 
And what speed uh, and outside spinning, please? The center on the outside of the, the ball. What are they spinning at, please? If it says 1,000. Well, if, yeah. yeah, if it's on a nine-inch ball, Douglas, um, I can tell you exactly. You have to ask Dale for that because he's a mathematician. He knows all the things. Yeah, but he's asking you. Why would I answer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've got a blinky clue. <laughs> I'm taking off my uh, microphone to put this. I'll be back in a sec. Put this uh, machine, this air cleaning thing on my head, whatever it's called. <clears throat> um, We've got Matthew Gallagher says, delay. Cherry, w sorry. Is it, uh, no, Matthew Gallagher. Right. Matthew Gallagher is uh, asking a question. Terry, he says, Yep. Was that lay? Was that the lathe in the main factory? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, no, it was in the annex. Was it? Uh, there was one in the annex and one in the main factory. MED Young... three was it? I don't remember. It's been I don't know. Young JP's asking, uh, why on earth did you pick that lathe when you could have had a stunning coronet herald? Because it's a lot better. <laughs> uh, I didn't take this lane. I went to Axminster to get a... I went here a lot. I went to Axminster to get this. Three-inch spindle gauge on my way to Bournemouth with the boy for a few days off. And I said, well, just pop into Axminster and uh, we'll get the spindle gauge and that'll be that. And she said, okay. And then we went. And I had a look at the lathe while I was there. And I said, oh, I like that one. Well, get it for your favorite Christmas present. Christmas um, yeah, right, Darwin is asking why 50 degrees over 45 degrees or the 40 40 ground? No reason, no real reason, just, just for the fact that uh, I, I thought that the height of my legs and how I hold the tool, the bevel comes in contact. That's the thing. If, you, if, you, if you're short or tall, you know, whatever, normally, you know, not the normal, but, you know, the average height, then if you stand with where you like to stand, and then you still rest where you like it, provided it's on, the, you know, near enough center line where you get it, then you can quite easily, look at the bevel, try this one, try that one. You may find that uh, you'll get to a stage where you're not cutting very good. You change the bevel on it because of your point. <laughs> All of a sudden, you cut a lot better. JP has got a question for you. Are you going to put a CA finish on it? Asking for a friend? I was thinking Lol. of it. I was thinking of it, but Mark's not very well at the moment, and he's sort of really tired and all that, so he's just getting even more upset. But he's not. Tonight, after watching me finish it, I was thinking about it. John S. is asking. Is it me, or does JP look like Che Guevara? Hey, JP looks like Che Guevara. Does she, is it just him, or does she, JP looking. look like Che Guevara? I feel that uh, <laughs> I feel he might be onto something there, J John. <laughs> <laughs> he might be onto something. <laughs> I can see a I can see a t-shirt in the offing. IDR Wood Turnings in. Good evening. Hello, IDR. Yeah. And also yeah. Clive Rogerson. I know we missed you a bit earlier on, Clive. You stood in the corner. You can come away now. Hey, Douglas Mungham has a serious question for you this time, Terry. There you go. He's never serious. The serious question for you. He says, Terry, he, he says, Ter Terry, he is six foot. What would be the best way to get my piano in the basement? <laughs> Get somebody else to do it, you six bird. Piano in the basement. Can you play the piano? Right oh, side, Fred. Yeah, all of us together. One each end, now steady as she goes. <laughs> you didn't I had an operation on my wrist about six years ago. And uh, I asked the surgeon afterwards, could I uh, play the piano? Because they froze the wrist so it doesn't, doesn't bend it. Can I play the piano? So she said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, can play it more." Sixty-five watching young 
carry on. What have I done this? Uh, you know why? They've come in to see Mark. Young, young Mark the gentleman Woodturner says JP looks more like Grizzly Adams no I think we're on to something with the Che Guevara <laughs> personally yeah. I think we're on to something with Che Guevara Going to switch off said noise. Ugh. Get rid of that. Right. There we are. Very poor timber this is. So I'm going to wash off the, the dust in the poor timber with a little bit. Of matter splated lyrics. Stephen Jobbins is Hello. in. Good evening, Steve. Stephen. Hello, <coughs> Steve. Strong that stuff. Hello, Stephen. All right, you ready? You ready, Joe? Oh, so, folks, hang on. Who, do, who do we want? Who do we, folks? Who do we oh, want? Who do we want? Let that dry for a minute. Methodist spirits is yeah, not yeah. dry yet. So. Who do we want to to sing now? Do we want to have Terry sing? Do we want to have Joe sing? Or would you rather not oh. sing? Oh no, I'll sing if I if I'm bothered to sing. I'm up for it. Oh look, Joe. I don't mind. Dear why Dark Matter offers this insight. He says Mark is one sexy pole dancer. <laughs> one sick pole dancer. That's supposed to be good, isn't it? If you're sick it means it's sick. I thought that sexy was sexy. For children. Sexy. I said, what's that? Yeah, that's sick, Dad. Oh, that's some derogatory mark. No, that's sick. That, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Call me old fashioned. Right. Nearly there. Nearly ready. I'm ready. Mark I'm looks really like Paul O'Grady, I can see here. <laughs> Nearly there. Is that dry? More like Rosie O'Grady. Sit there, not. Quick wipe off. Oh, yes, okay. Right. Another piece, of another piece of paper. Somewhere up there. There we go. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right, right love, you're up. Right. Start feel right. pity can be soft as your face with light brown, your chug gritty. Chug gritty. <laughs> I hope the usual checks in the post from Blin. I don't know, blimey. I'm putting this on really thick because it's absorbing in so quick, even though it'll go in there, the beeswax of it will block it all off, which is what I want, really. I don't bother to sand seal it because it uh, doesn't need it. It's nice and smoothy. Right. Now, Lewis, it's Joe, your fellow teammate. Oh, yes, of course, you won that time, didn't you, uh, Lewis? You actually won the game. One each, is it? it? Wendy! Uh, no. It's 2 1, isn't it, Lewis? 2 1 to you, two is one. it? Oh, right, okay. Mm. 2 1 to you, yeah, that's it. 2 1. Wendy from Toonpish Crafts is in. Hi, Wendy. Yeah. Question from oh, Douglas Mungham. Uh, Wednesday, <laughs> Douglas. Oh, sorry, I thought it's you meant what Douglas Mungham. It's, it's a very serious question. Terry, if the world yeah. was still one big landmass, would we all speak the same language? We still do. 
I can speak. I can speak every language on the planet. In Morse code. You just write it out for me, and I'll tap it in Morse code. Because I used to do Morse code when I was well, I still do actually, but <laughs> I was a radio ham for thirty years. Still got all the yes. antennas in the back garden. And you're still a bit of a ham now. Yep, still a bit of a ham now. Yes. <laughs> Forty words a minute I'll go up to. Is that fast? World eighty eighty meter champion for for a contest back in nineteen ninety four, I think it was. Yeah. Get in there, Lam. Uh, Douglas is asking you to morse this, so I'll read this out exactly, okay? Yeah. Papa Charlie Echo, uh, <laughs> hi, uh, exclamation, no, exclamation mark, uh, uh, apostrophe, Zulu Charlie oh, Lima. I'm trying Zulu, to do this. Zulu, Zulu, Zulu Papa, Charlie <laughs> Lima, November Yankee, Papa India, Quebec Hotel. Foxtrot, <laughs> November, Foxtrot, India, Papa, Whiskey, yeah, I tell you, I'll November. Actually I'll, actually, I'll actually send it by our, uh, a da is a dash and a dit is a dot. Uh, we used to practice the best beef essence, right? And it goes, da 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 I reckon you're making that shit up. However, Steve Jobs does up? have a question. Steve Jobs does have a question. <laughs> he asked, what was your call sign? And Clive Rogerston has put in what he actually wants you to say it as dash dot 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 dash dot dash dot dot <laughs> slash dash dash space dash dot dot slash dash dot dot dash dot dot dash dot dash dot dash dash. Oh, I can't on top of my head. Um, my call sign was, still is, G0JNZ. Good, eh? Sounds like a dodgy number oh, from the 1800s. Not no, bad, it is. Oh, that's that's so about five, five mil. Oh, five mil thick. I think go through the bottom. Oh, that was all right. All right. Pick up my chip. What's the second minute, sir? How many? 46 minutes. 46 minutes, blimey. 46 minutes. You're just going to finish off the bottom, and that's you. Yeah, I'll finish the bottom off. I'll finish the bottom off. Mark said do an hour, so I've had the rush to do the hour. Really. Over, you know, playing, I would probably take five hours for this, but... There we are. I thought, see if I can do it. Do it in an hour. Bingo. Um, Chuck Center is over there. Screw this little piece on because it's. Uh, I don't want it to uh, have the cup sander on it as well. There we are. A piece of this. <coughs> Look at that. All right, that works. That should do us, team. Smaller tool rest, I think. Uh, a couple of questions out in the chat. First from Douglas Mungham. Terry, how fast does a galaxy go around a black hole? 
And the other one is from Richard Piers asking, where did you get the Threaded Live Center from? I've been searching all over for one. Um, well, if you buy the Axminster 508, you get this for free with it. Ah. Comes with it. They do spoil us. It's the same. I think the Paramatic's got one like it as well. I'm not quite sure. But I think it might have. That's about the right light, I think, not to do that. Yeah. There we are. Okay. Well, no attempt to take the bottom off without uh, ruining said ball. Nice light cut. I don't know if you can see that, all right. It's, uh, lift that one up. Oops, just pulled it off. I might. Waste a bit of time, wouldn't it? And turn it down. See that already, can you? Yeah. Or not? Good. Yeah, you can see it. Yes. Really good. Undercut this a bit so it stands on it. Let's so switch to a smaller gauge, three eighth spindle gauge. Give it a bit, a bit tighter. Now, if I was Phil Anderson, or Mark the General Word Turner, I would turn the speed right down, place my spindle gauge on there, using the bevel to press against it. First time I've done this, Mark, but I think, actually, it's too rest a bit too high. Right? Just drop it down slightly. But seeing you did it, and showed me, and Phil showed me, I'll do the same. Hold said spindle gauge. Be bevel there, turn it on, slowly cut the nub off, and when the nub stops with the hand on the stop switch, switch it off. Look at that. Yay. So, we get Mark's, Mark's favorite chisel, the skew chisel. And um, a off. question from Huey. It said, Terry, would you like to see the green, green grass of home? 
I've got it here. Two allotments, you. Right, let's pull that back out of the way. How are we doing for time? 8, uh, right now, you're 54 minutes in, sir. You still have 60 that? people watching. Pull that back out of the way again. Where, where it went was before. There you go. So there is said bowl. Hope you like it. It's actually weighs less than balsa wood. It's like five millimeter thick. Right down to the bottom without a funnel. That's not too bad. Uh, question from Huey again. How is Delilah these days, Terry? Oh, fine. Fine. Blow her up every week. Just sweep the shames out of the way. I'll trip over a minute. That's... Matthew right, Gallagher's got a question just before I go, Terry, do you know any of the Plymouth Wood Turnage Club? I don't actually, um, because uh, I was going to join, I, 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 you know, basically a lone turner all my life, just getting out of the way of other things, you know, I won't say the wife, but because I don't really want to get out of the way of her, but just getting out of the way of people and coming and doing my own thing and then... Uh, my son suggested I'd go on YouTube and being a very shy sort of person, uh, I thought I'll have a go. <laughs> so, and then I checked on the Pl wood turning clubs in Plymouth, and um, there are there are some, but of course with this COVID business, I can't uh, I can't join any yet. So I will I will do as soon as it uh, as soon as it ends. Once you know I've had my jab, <sighs> whatever they call it. Uh, and they open up again, I shall. Right, if I just change that to a way now, I'll get my stool. I'll get my stool, put my stool there. Get my mouse, click the button. And try and attempt to change the camera. See, this, this is the bit that gets me the computers. I do all the rest. Any rubbish. As you will have mouse right. in the house. I take it you're all dressed. No. No. Get yourself no. dressed. I am. No. Oh, I've done something wrong there. I've done something wrong now. Can't get this back to me. Boom. Oh, I've just taken off my mankini. We're all good. Right. -oh. Can you see me? No. I've got see your workshop. For some reason, my screens. My screens. All I've got is Dale's face in there now, and it's like a big, 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 big. Did something wrong. Never mind. Anyway, that'll do. There we are. Right. Team. Uh. How's that? In shot? Yes. Yeah. In shot. Wow. One tulip wood bowl. First time I turned tulip wood. It's been there in the round since 1989 on the ticket. Hope you like it. The grass love like that. it really. Five millimeter thick, all the way down and across the bottom. I was going to turn a, um, I was going to put in a mortise in the bottom, but oh, better not. I might go through it. So did the tenon instead. So thank you, Mark, for uh, asking me to step in. Get well soon, buddy. Don't expect this every other week. Every other five months, maybe. There we are, team. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Dale and Joe, for earworming for me. Um, that's twice I've been on in a week, really, isn't it? I don't know. It's getting a bit much. However, lovely to see you all in. And uh, have the rest of the evening, pleasant evening. Thank you very much. I'm now going to switch the button off if I can find it. Uh, it should say end shot somewhere, but it's miles away now. Ah. Thank you, everybody, and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Did that work? I'm not sure that's finished now. Perhaps it isn't. Still trying to. Ah, there it is.